Now let's consider the Smoot-Hawley Tariff from the history of the United States. To do this, we need to go back to the Great Depression of the 1930s. Of course, this is a time when real output was plummeting and unemployment was as high as 25%. And the key question here is, how much were tariffs to blame? During the 1930s, tariffs went up quite a bit, but it will turn out that tariffs were not a major driving force behind the Great Depression. Just for background, the Smoot-Hawley Tariff passed in June of 1930. It raised duties an average of about 22.7%. Due to the Smoot-Hawley Tariff, the relative price of imports increased about 5.8%, and of course you'll note this is a problem of tax incidence. The amount by which prices change will not be exactly the same as the amount by which tariffs change. By the way, the estimates to follow in this video, they are coming from a very good paper by Douglas Irwin, and that is called The Smoot-Hawley Tariff, A Quantitative Assessment. There was in the 1930s some subsequent deflation, and a lot of the Smoot-Hawley Tariff was defined in nominal terms, so this deflation combined with the way the tariff was written, that was to raise the effective tariff another 30% above and beyond what was originally written into the bill. So if we take the joint impact of the original Smoot-Hawley bill and then the subsequent deflation, Irwin estimates that that cut imports into the United States by about 12 to 20 percent. If we look at 1930 to 1932, we find that the volume of U.S. imports, all things considered, is falling by about 41.2 percent. Of course, by no means was all of that due to Smoot-Hawley, because at the same time, real GDP was falling by about 29.8%, and of course, that's going to cut back on imports too. Irwin's best estimate is that Smoot-Hawley plus the subsequent deflation, that accounted for about 22% of the 41.2% decline in imports over this period, so you can think of Smoot-Hawley as causing a bit more than half of the overall import decline. But here's the key point for why Smoot-Hawley was not a driving force behind the Great Depression. If we look at imports as a share of GDP in, say, 1929, we find that imports are about 4.2% of GDP, and that's just not that big a chunk of the economy. So Irwin estimates that given that imports were relatively small, the efficiency loss of this tariff was about 0.1 to 0.4% of U.S. GDP. Virtually all economists agree the tariff was a bad idea. It cut off a lot of trade. It lowered business confidence. But in quantitative terms, this simply isn't nearly large enough for it to be a driving force behind the Great Depression. It should be noted there was also a trade retaliation effect. So because the U.S. put Smoot-Hawley on its imports, other nations over time retaliated. It's difficult to estimate how big an effect this is. Irwin is estimating that as a result of retaliation, U.S. exports are losing about 10% of their value. We're not sure what that figure is. That will get the cost of Smoot-Hawley higher. But again, a lot of that retaliation is coming a bit later, and it still doesn't have the tariff as a driving force behind the Great Depression. The Great Depression does last through the 1930s in the U.S., but the happy side of the story is that in later parts of the 1930s, the U.S. starts moving back toward free trade. To read more about that, you can see this piece by Doug Irwin on the later reciprocal free trade agreements. Also, for in general more information, you can just Google Smoot-Hawley Tariff.